All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and this is going to be part two of the process video of how to use the tools available on TrueDFS to build uh, MLB lineups, uh, specifically for tournaments. And in part one, I went over um, building lineups yourself. In other words, using the projections and using the stack tools to hand build lineups up to, you know, you build 20 lineups that way. And what this video is going to deal with is how to use the optimizers to help build your lineups using the tools available. And I don't want to make this too long. We are going to do some specific videos, I think, with the Saberson people and how to use their optimizer. Um, but I do want to spend a little time on this. And I wanted to just reiterate what I say quite a bit about using optimizers to build lineups. Remember, an optimizer is not a smart living creature. An optimizer is simply a, a computer program that does what you tell it to do. You know, it gets programmed to do certain things, but exactly what it does is in large part based on what you tell it to do. OK, um, and it's a, an important thing to remember. And the, the, the other thing is that depending what optimizer you use, you're going to get different results because different optimizers are programmed differently and you can tell it to do different things. OK, and I will give you an example using the difference between, say, a Rotor Grinders HQ, a Fantasy Cruncher, and a Saberson, uh, they sound like all the same, but they're in, they're very different. I'm not saying what's better or worse. I'm just saying that that they're different. They all do exactly what you tell it to do, but they do just different things. You know, they just allow you to tell it to do different types of things. Um, so the first thing I will do is we'll start with the main homepage on, on TrueDFS, I guess. Um, where would that be? Let's go to the main site where you'll be able to get the projections and the projection tables. So you click over here, you get the projections. And I showed this in the last one as well but just to kind of show you how to navigate a little bit. I'm, I'm even not that great at navigating around this way. So you get this table um, of projections, okay? And what this table allows you to do is to um, export these into certain files so that you can then upload them into your favorite optimizer. Now we have one for other sports that is in-house that Evan has worked on and he's gonna probably work on a baseball one too, which is extremely primitive for now. Um, so, we're not, so we're not gonna focus on that one for this video because he hasn't even done it yet, but we're gonna focus on, on, on well, we're gonna do specifically SaberSim for the purposes of this, but you can use our projections and just hit the CSV file and download them, and then upload those to your favorite optimizer. And then you could plug them in and have it do what you tell it to do. Um, but as, as I was saying, what you tell it to do is just going to be, it's just going to be different. Like for example, let me go to, um, let's start and we'll go to Roto Grinders, okay? I mean, we could use Fantasy Cruncher, you could do whatever, but let, let's let's start with Roto Grinders. And let's say that you were gonna use their uh, lineup HQ to build uh, DraftKings lineups. So you would take our projections, because I think they're the best, and you wanna upload those to, um, to the, um, to replace Roto Grinders, for example. And I keep them in a different file, but you, you'll, you'll, you'd save the, the uploaded CSV file to, um, to your computer, you'd upload this way. I'm gonna name it here 4-7 for April 7th, I mean, whatever. 
um, different spelling. It kind of handles that nicely. And we're just going to go here. And you're going to hit use your custom projections for both ownership and for, for projections. So it's now replaced the default projections with ours. And then you are now at this point where you have to tell it what to do, okay? Like if you just hit, say, optimizer, right? 30 lineups. What it's going to give you is basically the highest producing lineup in order, okay? Based on the projected median projection, okay? Um, it's not going to consider stacks. It's not going to consider correlation. It's not going to consider ownership fade. It's not going to consider any, any randomness. It's just going to put the, it's a calculator, right? It's going to give you the top performing lineups in order and, and rank them one down to 30, okay? If you do nothing else. But then what you gotta be, what you have to do is, is, is work with these rules. Like you could put a, a hitter range of outcomes, you increase that variance there for a little bit. Team level randomness, you upgrade that a little bit, all right? You, you could set it to, have a minimum amount of unique players being more than one. You could set it to you only, you don't want to have more than 70% of a single guy. You could put a salary cap on this. Um, your pitcher exposure between starting pitchers and relief pitchers, total minimum max, use min max exposures, max bat batters to the opposing pitcher or whatever, not to mention custom settings. You can do whatever you want with this. You could say, I want to have at least one player from Pittsburgh and three players from Washington or whatever it is. Or if you wanted, you want to make it a little easier, you could just put stacks and you could set it to do quick stats. So, you know, you could say, okay, I just want anything with 5X and I want to make, you know, 100% of my lineups, for example, to have some kind of 5X stat. Um, and so then you could, you could say, all right, I also never want to use like the nine here, you know, or the eight here. So then you could set primary, you know, stack minimums and maximum percentages for each team and go through them all. Like, for example, if I, you just did what I just said, now you could build your 30 lineups and you'll get, you know, five, five man stacks, which are, and you'll have mostly, and you get some Mets, Bieber with with the, with Wainwright, you know, or whatever, and it'll just it'll it'll fly it that way. Um, and then what you do is you is you then export these to your CSV, and you'll upload them to DraftKings, and 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 away you go. So again, what we what we've done is is access kind of a calculator, and then spent a lot of time telling it what to do. And once, you know, we tell it what to do, it's a very simple thing. It just calculates it. It's, as Evan will tell you, it is a hard thing to program, but, but once it's programmed, it just, it, just, it just grinds, right? And what's cool about it, again, is you can export these things and just upload them to DraftKings really, really quick. Um, they make it really easy to torch money. Not they, I mean, like in general, technology makes that very possible. Now, on the other hand, if you're going to use SaberSim, which is, you know, we, you know, we partner with SaberSim and I've used SaberSim, you know, quite a bit over the last couple of years. Um, it's, it, it's a different type of process. Okay. Um, it's a different process and it's also a, a, it's, it's really a different type of calculator. It's a different thing completely. Um, we now have on somewhere, find it we knew how we do have saber sim here yeah and we'll officially launch it soon but it's already on here on our site and one thing that it should do now but i think max has evan just hasn't programmed for for baseball yet is it actually will pre-upload the true dfs projections alongside of the saber sim projections to allow you to choose one one or the other okay but but let's presume that that hasn't happened. 
one thing, first of all, I can do, I could still upload my projections in here the old way. So let's just do that. So now it uploads in here and, you know, as now it's replaced it with, with true DFS's ownership. Okay. So now you see that there's a kind of a difference. So you, you've, you've, you have your projections in here. Same thing we did with rotor grinders. And now here's the difference with SaberSim, you really don't have to put any rules in. And, and the reason why is because SaberSim, while it's sort of a calculator, it's also a simulator. So it does, it, it actually simulates the games and, and provides kind of like range of outcomes type results. Um, so it doesn't just produce the median outcomes, right? It, it, it provides a, a, a host of different outcomes and depending on what types of settings you pick, those are the types of, of, of lineups it's going to build for you, right? Um, so you're not going to have to tell it per se to play four guys from one team or five guys from another team, or whatever. Because it's a simulator and because it's already set to, by default, provide upside correlated lineups, it's just going to do it already for you. So that's either, a, you know, you look at it as a positive or a negative. I think it's a positive. But it, it certainly, you know, it's not the same thing as, as running an optimizer through, through rotor riders. It's just different. Um, better, worse, whatever. I happen to like it, but it is different. Um, so then what you do is when it's all in here, you hit build lineups. And now you're going to tell it kind of what to do. You know, you're, you're going to tell what kind of sliders you're going to, what kind of settings you're going to put. If you don't touch it, you know, SaberSim has already decided for you that these are the, the levels of correlation, ownership fade, and simulation variance that is appropriate for, say, a 20 max contest. And I'm inclined to just believe them, you know, until you get really, really experienced with using SaberSim. Um, and until you really start to distinguish between different types of slates, I think that you really should just just to stick with the um with the uh with the saber sim recommended sliders because it does provide high correlation lineups a, a decent amount of ownership fade and sim variance and and think about it like all those things that you could have had to do in these other optimizers is they already kind of pre-do it for you um i personally don't mess with any of this i i don't put a min salary a max salary you know I don't mess with the minimum uniques or max exposure. I just kind of let it fly. Um, and you'll see here that even though we set it to, what do we say, 30 lineups? Even though we say build 30 lineups, it's not going to build 30. It's going to build more. It's going to build like 500. And the reason for that is because then when you can make kind of, you know, um, first of all, when you want to do some quality control after it, and you want to X guys out, it'll have lineups pre-made already that, that will automatically replace themselves, right? Um, here, allow batters versus opposing pitcher. I think it's it's by default set to no. And then we just kind of hit, hit, hit roll, right? So we hit start new build and it's going to build you the 30 lineups and you haven't really had to do anything except upload the projections, uh, really. Um, if, if you trust the algorithms and trust the simulators and, and, and you're, you're, you really don't have to spend all that time making all those rules. And, you know, I'll leave that to you, whether that's better or worse. Um, but that's, that's the reality. So now it's going to spit out your lineups here. And, you know, not surprisingly, I mean, look at some of this. Like this, is, this, this looks a lot different, right? This just looks a lot different than, say, the Roto Grinders builds. And the Roto Grinders builds were based on the exact same projections. I mean, think about that. You know, I mean, you're getting lineups here that are just look a lot kookier than, than what we saw from the Roto Grinders one. And the reason for that, we're going to get to that, is because it's factoring in some ownership fade. You know what I mean? It, it's factoring in 
that you don't want to just get the chalk, which is why you're getting all this Astro stuff. And, you know, for example, let's look through what types of teams there are here. I mean, Houston is number one, Pittsburgh's number two. I don't even see the Mets. You know, the Mets, I have like, we have 0% ownership of the Mets uh, and in the DraftKings build, which is the exact same projections as the build on Roto Grinders, <laughs> right? So, so needless to say, if you're going to play on Saberson, you're going to have to live with this, this reality that you're going to get you know, sometimes you're going to get like a whole bunch of teams that you didn't think you were going to get. And it's up to you whether you want to live with that or not. I personally love living with that. Um, but uh, it's not for everybody. You'll end up leaving money on the table. Look at this. Like right off the bat, you have this lineup, which leaves 1900 on the table. I mean, like, welcome, welcome to Saberson. Right off the bat, you get, you have a, Valdez Bumgardner with, 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 with a, with a four man Astros, five man Astros, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it requires a bit of vision, but I've done this with Saberson a lot. And, and when these things get there, they have like a real chance to take the whole, take down all the cheese. And that is kind of what you're looking for. Um, but let's say you wanted to engage in a little bit of quality control here. You kind of go in here and you'd say, okay, see, first of all, what do I got? I got yeah, a lot of five twos, four threes. So I'm probably not going to mess around with that. Let's just take a look and see what we have. So 76% used. Let's just say that I don't want 76% used. It's too much. You could go ahead and, and, and reduce that right here to say 60. And you'll see that the lineups on the right, they'll, they'll automatically update with the new with the new lineups, okay? They get more Pittsburgh. Teach you a lesson. You thought you were going to get Braves and, 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 and the Mets, huh? <laughs> no. Oh, welcome to Saberson, boys. It's going to be a long season. Hope you're ready for it. Um, and let's say, like pitching-wise, you don't feel comfortable with 50% Brubaker. Oh, we 50% Brubaker. You like that? Well, if you don't, you just X them out. And then boom, you X them out. And you know what it'll do? It redoes all the lineups for you from that pool of 500. And you're all ready to go. Now, the other thing, by the way, that you could do if you don't like that, is this these lineups were ranked by what they call Saber score? So Saber score is their way of measuring um, the combination of points, upside, and ownership fade. If you change this to rank them by projected score, now you're getting all those all those good guys that you that you that you used. Now you're getting the Shane Bieber, Adam Wainwright builds. You're getting Shane Bieber with the Mets. You're getting Bieber and Wainwright with the Mets. You know, and, and and there's certainly something to be said about playing this way, but I don't know, man. I I, I will say this, that I've been playing baseball a couple of years now, and whenever you have these pretty lineups with, with, with the teams that look really good, they just, they just don't get there that often. It's almost always just some, some, something else. That's the best I could describe it. So many times I've just experienced this where I can play all five Colorados, make it work. And how is this going to lose? Next thing you know, it's the bottom of the fourth and it's two to one. And you're like, what? It, it's it. Baseball is a very, it's a very non projectile projectable sport. So, you know, you have to embrace the sim variance. You have to embrace this 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 model if you're going to play this way, and I'm into it, but not everybody is. So we go back to Saber Score, re rank them again, get all of our Brewmaker back, and then we will download them just like anything else, upload them to DraftKings, and away we go.
Um, and needless to say, the process is exactly the same for FanDuel. So hopefully that, that helps. Um, there's going to be a more in-depth tutorial specifically on the use of Saberson because as you might imagine, there's a lot of subtleties to this. Um, we'll talk about how to late swap and things like that. But I think this is a pretty good primer on how to use my, my, the tools available to you to utilize the optimizers to build your lineups. It's gonna be a fun season and hope to be helping you navigate it. Good luck.